Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Tech in 10, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs football show from the Rustin Daily Leader. Um, and this year brought to you by the North Louisiana North Louisiana Medical Center. Um, excited to have them on board as a partner this season. Um, very you know happy and thrilled um, to know that they value um, you know this video series and, and supporting you know Bulldog fans and all of our coverage that we try to provide. So uh, we're happy to have them on board this year as a partner. Um, I'm sports reporter Matt Bellinson, and uh, and welcome back. Um, we are officially in football season, folks. Um, the weather outside, you know, it is it is not delightful. Um, it's you know rather hot, as you might notice. Um, but besides that, um, it's football season. Scrimmages are going on. Fall camps are ending for high school and uh, you know college programs. Uh, and for Louisiana Tech with week zero, I mean, this is game week. Um, the Bulldogs will play a game this Saturday to open the regular season against FIU. Um, and so with that, I figured, you know what, why don't we come in here and let's give our official predictions for how this year is going to go. You know, you look at this, you look at this team right now, brought in 40 new transfers, a couple of coaching staff changes on the, you know, on the edges. Um, and I think for a lot of Bulldog fans and coaches and players, you know, I wrote a story at the beginning of fall camp that, um, you know, without even, you know, budging the topic, players and coaches voluntarily said, like, they feel like this program um, can get back on track pretty quickly this year and contend in the league. Um, we're going to get in, into my predictions here in a second to see if I agree. Um, but I think just the general vibe going into this season um, is that the Bulldogs are going to be improved. Um, it's pretty easy, I feel like, to improve from a 3-9 and nine season. Um, you know, all you have to do is win four games to improve technically. Um, but I feel like Louisiana Tech is in for a much better year. Um, than what they had last year. You know, first year under Sonny Cumbie, a um, lot, you know, a lot of things just did not come into shape, a lot of injuries to important positions. Um, and I feel like this year, you just look at the offseason moves that have been made. I think the I think the optimism is warranted. You know, I'm maybe not as high you know, of a ceiling on, on this team, uh, just based on the, you know what they have coming back on paper um, and based on the schedule that's in front of them. But um, I, I do feel like a better season is ahead. Um, and so we're going to dive into my official predictions here. And then later on, I'm going to dive into um, some breakout players that I feel like are going to be some real standouts for the Bulldogs this season. I think let's start with, this is why you're here. Let's start with my official record prediction. I'm going to go through each uh, game on the schedule here, um, kind of give a little bit of rationale for why I think uh, the Bulldogs are going to win or lose that certain game. Uh, and then I, at the end, uh, you obviously will know my record. Um, it obviously starts, like I mentioned at the top, uh, the Bulldogs this Saturday. They're going to host FIU in a Week 0 game, one of, I think, seven or eight uh, games around the country that are taking place during Week 0. So the, the eyes of the country are going to be on Louisiana Tech. It's an 8 p.m. kickoff. Um, you know, people are going to be in, on, in ready for, to watch some football. And Louisiana Tech, you know, if you have CBS Sports Network, it's going to be on people's TVs more than usual than it was last year. Um, and so I think the Bulldogs are going to start off the year with a win, against FIU. However, I am recording this after hearing the news from Sonny Cumbie um, at, at the end of fall camp that uh, starting running back Marquise Crosby will be out for this season opener. You know, he nearly rushed for 1,000 yards last year, had nine touchdowns. He was the leading returner and rusher in Conference USA. Um, and then obviously Tyree Shelton, the Miami of Ohio transfer, um, he's also questionable. So, you know, at least in terms of the depth chart that a lot of people are thinking, you know, there's your one and two running back that are, you know, probably not going to play. Um, in the opener. So um, that, that's going to leave Charvis Thornton and a true freshman running back. Keith Willis is kind of the uh, the next group up there. So that definitely is a factor. I think Louisiana Tech is probably not going to win by as big of a margin as I originally predicted. I still think that, you know, based on what FIU has, you know, they didn't really have that great of a year last year. They did beat Louisiana Tech in overtime. Um, but I think the Bulldogs with Hank Bachmeyer and this new offense, I think they're going to prevail. I think they start the year with a win. Um, then you move on, you go on the road to SMU the next week. You know, just on paper, I have this as a loss. Um, it is worth noting, though, that uh, SMU lost, you know, it's probably, you know, most productive quarterback in quite some time uh, to the transfer portal. Um, and now they're going to start, you know, a new quarterback in Preston Gray, um, which I will note, um, you know, because SMU doesn't have a week zero game. So when they when they welcome the Bulldogs um, to SMU in Dallas um, on September 2nd, this will be the SMU opener. Um, so I feel like there is a chance if you're the Bulldogs that if this defense is improved as much as you think um, and your offense is starting to click pretty early, um, you could catch SMU by surprise. You know, they could still be working out the kinks in their offense. You know, first game of the year, you know, there's bound to be some sort of, you know, kind of uh, work to improve. And I feel like if Preston Gray and that offense maybe isn't clicking on all cylinders, if you can get a turnover or two, 
you know, that could be a surprise game. You could go on the road and steal a win. But I think on paper right now, I probably have that as a loss, um, the Bulldogs losing to SMU in Week 2. Um, then you come back home, you play Northwestern State. Um, I think that's pretty clearly a win. Northwestern State, you know, pretty solid year last year. It saw some improvement. Um, but I think this is kind of similar to the, the Stephen F. Austin game last year for the Bulldogs um, where they can kind of get right uh, and kind of put up some points and you just kind of have everyone feel good around the program, you know, get a pretty solid win. Um, and then you're also home uh, the week following uh, against North Texas. Um, you know, North Texas you know, no longer in Conference USA, um, but the Bulldogs will certainly remember the loss to the Mean Green last year, you know, nearly giving up 500 yards rushing. Um, and I feel like this defense – I mean, it can't be as bad. Um, I certainly feel like this is one of those games where you can kind of say, like, okay, what is Louisiana Tech this year? You know, if you're if you're keeping track at home, you know, right now I've got them at two and one on the year going into this North Texas game. You know, if you win this North Texas game, you're three and one going into Nebraska. Um, you're feeling a lot better about the direction of the program as opposed to you know you, you lose this North Texas game. It's not the end of the world. It's a non-conference game, um, but still, you know, two and two, it just feels different than three and one. Um, I think going into Lincoln. That being said, I actually have the Bulldogs winning this game against North Texas. Um, again, I think this defense is vastly improved at linebacker, defensive line. I don't think they're going to get run all over like they did last year. Um, and I think the Bulldogs take a real big win at home uh, before heading over to Lincoln, uh, which kind of segues into my next uh, schedule here. Um, and, you know, I think this Nebraska game, I think if it was earlier in the season, um, which I've actually heard some other people say, and I and I tend to agree. If this Nebraska game was like week one or week two, you I, I feel like the the Bulldogs maybe could have some sort of chance to maybe catch Nebraska sleeping. Um, you know, under first year head coach Matt Rule, you know, first year in a program, there could be some jitters that first week or two. You know, a lot of new faces, um, but I feel like by week five, I think you know Nebraska, you know, for good or for worse. Um, I think they're going to know what they are, and I think they're going to do a pretty good job of it. And so, you know, I have Louisiana Tech uh, going on the road to Lincoln. I think it's going to be a packed house, you know, easily the most packed uh, environment that Louisiana Tech is going to play in. You know, they sit sit 70,000 or something like that. Um, so I have the Bulldogs losing on the road at Nebraska. Um, so, again, just keeping track at home. We're now going into conference play here, and I have the Bulldogs at 3-2 and two overall. Um, then you start conference play on the road at UTEP. You beat UTEP last year as one of your conference wins. Um, I have this as a win. Um, I don't think the Miners are necessarily going to, you know, contend in Conference USA by any means. They had a, they had an okay season last year, but like I said, um, you know, for as bad as Louisiana Tech was last year, the Bulldogs were able to beat them uh, pretty convincingly. Um, so I actually have the you know this as a win to open conference play. Um, then I think probably the game of the year, um, just in terms of on paper, you know, what you feel like these teams are going to be at this point. Um, you come back home and you play Western Kentucky, you know, Western Kentucky for a lot of people, you know, they're picked number one in the preseason poll. Um, and they return a lot of talent, you know, Austin Reed at quarterback, um, that offense alone. I mean, he led the nation in passing yards last year, returned a lot of skill. Western Kentucky, I, I mean, unless something drastic happens, I feel like Western, Western Kentucky is going to be in the driver's seat for the for the league title uh, until someone proves them otherwise. This could be Louisiana Tech's chance. You know, based on where I have them right now, you know, Louisiana Tech wins the opener, which is a conference game, and then wins the game at UTEP. So they're 2-0 going into this game in conference play. You know, Western Kentucky, I feel like, could be in similar position. So, you know, this could very well be, you know, potentially a spot in the Conference USA Championship game. I know it's early, you know, kind of middle of the season, uh, but just based on how the conference schedule, sh- you know, shakes out, you know, if Louisiana Tech wants to contend for the league, I think you have to win this game against Western Kentucky. Um, you know, unfortunately for the Bulldogs, I have Western Kentucky coming in to the Joe uh, and taking that win. I just feel like Austin Reed in this offense, they're going to be clicking on all cylinders. And even if the defense, you know, for the Bulldogs is improved, um, I feel like it's going to be a lot to keep up with the firepower of that offense. And I just feel like Western Kentucky is going to uh, be as good as they as they appear to be on paper. So I, I have Western Kentucky winning that game. Um, and then you go on the road at middle, you know, middle, you know, for whatever reason, they're picked, you know, in the upper half uh, of this conference this year. You know, I, they're, I think they're OK. You know, Rick Stock still has been there quite a while. Um, they've always been kind of average, you know, winning six to seven to eight games, never really going beyond that. Um, so I don't really see them as a true contender. I think they might honestly fall into that like Louisiana Tech mix where like I think they're good. They're definitely in the upper half of the league, but I don't see them as a contender by any means. Um, and so I have Louisiana Tech going on the road and beating Middle Tennessee. 
Um, again, you know, a pretty average run game. I think if the Bulldogs can uh, tackle this here and uh, and play de- play some defense, I think they can uh, go on the road and get a win. Um, and then I have them losing two straight games here. I think you come back home, you play New, New Mexico State. I think the New Mexico State Aggies, I feel like, are going to be one of those teams, you know, newcomer into the league. I think a lot of people are going to kind of overlook them as maybe, you know, okay, you know, we'll, you know, we'll kind of coast over these guys. I feel like New Mexico State, based on the skill that they have coming back at quarterback and on the offensive side of the ball, um, I, I, and on defense, too, they got some pretty good linebackers. Um, I think New Mexico State um, comes to the Joe and takes a, uh, takes a win from the Bulldogs. Um, then the following week, I have uh, Louisiana Tech going on the road at Liberty. Uh, and losing that game as well. Um, you know, Liberty's always been very consistent. You know, they've been, I don't know how many bowl games in a row. I don't even remember the last time they had a losing season. I wrote that in my preview. I mean, it's definitely been over a decade since they've had a losing season. Um, and obviously, coming from the independent ranks now into a league, um, you know, their schedule is going to look a bit, little bit different. So I'm curious to see if they can adapt to that change. I think they will. I think Liberty is going to finish in the top, you know, three or four in this league when it's all said and done. Um, and I do have them beating Louisiana Tech um, when they come on the road uh, that year. Um, but then I have the Bulldogs bouncing back um, from two straight losses uh, to two straight wins to end the year. Um, the Bulldogs come home and beat Sam Houston State in their home finale. Um, and then I have them going on the road and beating Jacksonville State um, as well, another newcomer in this league um, to a win, with a win to close the year. So um, for those that maybe weren't counting as we went along, um, I officially have Louisiana Tech at 7-5 and five this year. You know, I think that's a pretty respectable record from where, you know, the Bulldogs ended the year last year at 3-9 and nine, um, and in the bottom, uh, you know, of Conference USA. Um, you know, again, I don't know where, you know, obviously um, all the other teams in Conference USA are going to be at record-wise, um, but I do feel like by season's end, I think Louisiana Tech is going to be much improved, you know, based on how the, you know, Western Kentucky, Liberty, you know, New Mexico State, maybe some of those other teams in the league based on record wise. I think we Louisiana Tech will have, you know, will be in the conversation for the league title. Um, you know, I think I, I don't see them as winning the league, at least not yet. You know, I think they've definitely improved on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Um, I still have some questions to see how that defensive line kind of works out. Um, you know, they really needed to get after the quarterback last year. They did not whatsoever. I think um, a safety led this team in tackle, uh, tackles for loss and sacks last year. So um, I'm really curious to see if that actually pans out. Um, but like I said, 7-5, and five, that's a pretty respectable record. That means Louisiana Tech is going back to a bowl game, um, which, again, after two straight 3-9 and nine seasons, I think if you're a Bulldog fan, you, you would definitely take that. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of my overall record prediction. You know, again, seven and five. I think Louisiana Tech bounces back. I think they're pretty solid. You know, um, and I think they are definitely in a bowl game. As as for breakout players, I'm gonna hit you with two on each side of the ball here before I let you go, um, just so fans can have an understanding of who I feel like by season's end um, is gonna have a real impact on this team. You've heard his name since the sprain. It's Hank Bachmeyer. He's a transfer from Boise State, you know, four-year starter, over 6,000 yards. Um, I mean, you've heard the rest. Um, just a really, really good football player, you know, at Boise State. Won a lot of games. And he's coming here to Louisiana Tech to win um, and to, you know, pilot this air raid offense that, you know, frankly, really couldn't really get off the ground um, that much last year just due to injury at the position. So um, I think quarterback Hank Bachmeyer, if he's as good um, as he is on paper and what he did at Boise State, and if he can take control of this air raid offense – you know, find Cyrus Allen, find, you know, Smoke Harris, you know, get the ball out where he needs to go, make his proper reads. He's also got a really good deep ball um, from what I've seen in fall camp. Um, so I think if he is as good as I as I think he will be, um, he's going to be Louisiana Tech's best offensive player. He's going to be the engine that drives the ship. Um, Demarcus Griffin-Taylor, we're going to switch over to defense here for a second. Um, he's going to play strong safety for the Bulldogs this year. He comes over from Stephen F. Austin, uh, excuse me, Demarcus Griffin-Taylor, actually, I was looking at Miles Hurd. Uh, Demarcus Griffin-Taylor, uh, he's going to play nickel uh, for this team coming over from Houston. Um, an, a really good DB, you know, a lot of experience. Um, Sonny Cumbie has talked about him often. You know, hard-hitting player, really rangy. Um, and I think the secondary, if you're just going to look at the, you know, defensive line, linebackers, uh, defensive backs, I would say the defensive backs are honestly kind of the sneaky group just in terms of talent. Um, I think Demarcus Griffin Taylor is going to have a really big year. Um, you know, doesn't have a lot of interception numbers, a lot of takeaway numbers, um, but I think he's just going to be a really solid tackler. Um, you know, he's going to be that extra body and that nickel. Um, and I think you know by season's end, you know, fans are going to know his name. We can switch over to Miles Hurd. Um, I was just so excited, I guess, to talk about him that I wanted to skip skip over Demarcus. But um, yeah, Miles Hurd, you know, strong safety, four year starter um, at Stephen F. Austin. 
just a really good player. Um, you know, he's familiar with this system, obviously playing for Scott Power at Stephen F. Austin, you know, previously. I'm just going to read you, I'm just going to read through his numbers, you know, in this system at Stephen F. Austin. Four years, 225 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four interceptions, seven forced fumbles, and 12 pass breakups. That's pretty good. Um, and if Louisiana Tech can get some of that in his final, you know, collegiate season here, man, I feel like you're going to be right back, you know, in the top 25 for takeaways like the Bulldogs were last year. So pretty high on Miles Hurd. You know, they call him Hitman Hurd. He's going to, you know, definitely lay the wood on a lot of, you know, offensive, you know, skill guys. And I think he's going to be a solid tackler for this team. And I think he's going to, you know, get, get uh, be a playmaker for this group. And I think he's going to do a pretty solid job. Um, and then last but not least, I'm going to end it with offense. Um, Nate Jones, you know, he's a tight end that comes back. You know, obviously we heard a lot about Griffin Bear last year as kind of a pass catcher, but Griffin, unfortunately, you know, dealt with some injuries. Um, and Nate Jones kind of stepped up in his place for a couple games, you know, caught, 100, caught 173 yards and one touchdown. Um, you know, true sophomore this year, he's back, and he's going to be this team's starting tight end along with, you know, a transfer in Ryan Rivera. Um, but from what, it, from what it sounds like, Nate's going to be kind of that primary down-to-down tight end, kind of be in a similar role to Griffin in this offense where, you know, he's certainly going to be blocking his fair share, but, He's going to be a trusted target for Hank. Um, you know, on third downs, he's going to be able to, you know, get out and run some routes. And I think he's going to be a yak guy, you know, yards after catch, you know, definitely be a playmaker. And so I feel like by season's end, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to talk about Smoke Harris coming back, Cyrus Allen in that wide receiver room. And certainly they're going to have big years. They're going to make lots of plays if Hank is as good as I think he's going to be. But I'm pretty high on Nate Jones. I've heard a lot of good things. And, you know, even for with even with him being a sophomore, I feel like, um, in this offense, you know, just again, given the skill guys on the outside and, you know, smoking the slot, I feel like Nate is going to have a pretty, you know, big opportunity, you know, to kind of take advantage of some smaller, you know, defenders. And I think he's going to have a pretty big year for this team. So I would look out for Hank Bachmeyer and Nate Jones on offense and then Demarcus Griffin Taylor and Miles Hurd on defense. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think Louisiana Tech in general is going to improve this year. I think there's got they got a lot of playmakers you know, through the transfer portal and coming back on its roster. And I think the Bulldogs, they're going to be respectable again. They're going back to a bowl game. And depending on how the rest of the conference shakes out, they could be in the mix for the Conference USA title. I don't see it, you know, just on paper, but I do think they're going to be very improved, and I do think they're going back to a bowl game. So that's going to do it here for this Tekken 10 season predictions video. Again, I want to thank North Louisiana, North Louisiana Medical Center for sponsoring this video. Um, and so for Matt Bellinson at the Rustin Daily Leader, just want to thank you all again. Looking forward to this season and have a good one.